Hello and welcome to my adaptation of Portal to an analog game design, in this case a board game, uh, consistent of several different aspects. My name is Phil Ferranti, I'm here to guide you through my adaptation. First I'd like to call your attention to the game board itself. Uh, you can see the path of the game is actually the circled layers or levels uh, that encompass the playing area. Uh, along with just some logos and uh, different aspects of Portal uh, to kind of bring in that immersion factor or at least to communicate the theme of the game to Portal players. On the board itself, you'll notice a few things. First of all is the uh, piece of cake right in the middle. That is the objective of the player, the first player to get the cake, similar to the game itself, uh, the digital version, is our winner. Next on the board, you'll notice some gray spaces. Uh, those are portable or spots on the board where players uh, can use their matched cards to lie down uh, in those spots. And should a player land on one of those gray spots in which they have laid down their matched cards, they can advance to an inner ring or uh, an inner level of the game and progress to the finish. Next, you'll notice the question mark spots on the board. Should a player land on one of those question marks, they are to draw a GLaDOS card. GLaDOS cards contain a variety of questions or tasks that allow players to collect tokens and then also to uh, seek and flip over cards, those portal match cards in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, where matches are necessary in order to advance through the game. Now moving away from the game board, you can see the four portal guns on the left hand side of your screen. Those are our player pieces. Two to four players are necessary. A flip token, uh, which is awarded for each correct answer or successfully completed task that might show up on a GLaDOS card is awarded to a player. That awards them two flips as they search for card matches. Our die has uh, the ability to roll up to four spaces with also two other variable spots, including uh, the question mark, which triggers the player to automatically draw a GLaDOS card and the two flips face, uh, which allows players to go directly to the match card section and uh, try to seek out two matches. As you move down from the dice, you'll see a timer, uh, which is used uh, in order to time opposing players to complete certain tasks or answer certain questions that are based off of whatever GLaDOS cards uh, display. And then also you'll find several pieces of tubes and uh, other structural pieces where uh, GLaDOS cards ask the players to build a certain structure uh, in which a marble has to pass through uh, successfully in a certain period of time in order to gain a flip token and have the opportunity to move on to the uh, match card section. Now let's take a look at what those GLaDOS cards actually encompass. Uh, the instructions over there on the left hand side in the blue just state that if a player lands on a question mark or rolls a question mark then they uh, draw a GLaDOS card. GLaDOS cards have a variety of functions. Uh, in addition to earning card flips with correct answers or by com correctly completing a task, uh, players are given a flip token. Uh, this token is awarded uh, to give them an incentive to answer questions correctly. Uh, and then also, just in case if they don't get a match, they still do gain some sort of uh, advantage over their opponent for a correct answer, response, or task. Players can use their tokens before they roll. Uh, the advantage of that is if, uh, let's say, a player is three spots away, uh, there's a gray spot available, they can place their cards down before they roll uh, on that spot. And if they do hit that spot correctly, then they can go ahead and uh, portal themselves into the inner layer uh, or an inner layer of the game and advance uh, a little bit more quickly. Tasks uh, associated with GLaDOS cards. Uh, you'll notice that we have build cards, solve cards, match cards, trap cards, and then also movement cards. Uh, later on, we're going to have a little game between the purple and red player uh, in order to make it a little bit more fair in terms of completing tasks. Um, the opposite player or an opposite player is actually the person who will draw and read the card aloud to the player who landed on a question mark or rolled a flip spot. Build cards require players to construct or build uh, a marble tower. They must build it within the time allotted. They must match the diagram according to pieces and uh, color of the structures. Uh, 
And if they do that correctly within the time limit, they are awarded both a token and the opportunity to flip match cards. Those cards have a variety of math and science-based questions uh, with a time limit. The uh, op opposing player will draw and read the card aloud to the player who landed on the spot. And uh, if the player landed on the spot can answer correctly within the time limit, uh, they are awarded a flip coin and also the opportunity to match cards. If a match card is drawn, the player must go straight to the match card section of the uh, playing area. Again, it's not on the board, it's just a separate area where players keep cards sprawled out. Uh, and they have to come up or try to find in two card flips the corresponding match that is shown on the card. Trap cards are also available. In this case, if you land on a GLaDOS uh, spot and you draw that card, then you can hang on to it and later on you can place it anywhere else on the board uh, before you go, uh, before your turn rather. And if an opposing player lands on that trap card, then they have to go back one level or uh, I guess you could say, uh, go to, if they're on an inner level, they have to go straight back to an outer layer of the game. Movement cards are actually rather powerful. Uh, if you lay down uh, match cards on a gray spot and you land one spot over or one spot short of them, you can lay down, if, you, if you've accumulated any, you can lay down one of these movement cards even after your turn or after you've landed on your spot to accelerate or decelerate wherever you, uh, the spot was that you landed on. So if I overshoot a matched section by one space, I can slam down my move back card and I can go back to my match card area and then I can portal into uh, another level of the game. I refer to this portion of the game a number of times, so I thought I'd go ahead and explain it now. Uh, this is the match card section of the game, again, uh, similar to a memory-based game that you might have played when you were a child. Um, several cards are, are, are shuffled and arranged face down and then set a, uh, aside uh, away from the board game itself. In order to advance or portal yourself uh, to the inner levels of the game and eventually become the winner, players have to match cards to one another. And those match cards have to be placed down on the gray spots on the board in order to advance. Uh, and they have to land on those spots, only the spots that where they have laid down their own match cards in order to advance. The match cards are comprised of several different icons or graphics, uh, each one having a buddy that they have to be matched to. You can see we have a companion cube uh, to a button. We have our trigger to a door. We have our energy orb to our energy compressor, and we have our blue portal to our orange portal. Found throughout Portal, um, and so players have a pretty common understanding about how they might impact the game. In Portal, these are used to unlock different areas of room, and the analog version, these are all used to advance to the inner levels of the game. So whether a player uses a flip token or uh, completes a task or answers a question correctly, they go on to the match card section. Obviously, in order to match, you have to connect two of these cards to one another. Uh, in the instructions, these two uh, certain cards are only matched to each other, so the blue portal only matches with the orange portal. You cannot match a blue portal with a cube or anything like that. Once a player accumulates a matched pair, uh, they can hang on to it. They can set them down at the start of any turn on any gray spot. Uh, they're the only way for a player to advance into the inner levels of the game. The only way to advance is to land on a gray space in which you have laid down a set of matched cards. If a player reaches a portion of the game and does not hold any matched cards or does not have any available to lie down, then they must continue to play and circle uh, that level continuously until they are able to accumulate a set of matched cards. The final part of our package game includes the um, marble tower pieces, and these will be used uh, should a player draw a GLaDOS build card. We're going to go ahead and simulate a portion of a game here to kind of explain how things work. Uh, we have the red player and the purple player, and the purple player is going to lead us off as they're on the start position and ready to roll. There's no question mark uh, on that spot, so we're going to go ahead and advance to our red player's turn. Our red player moves into the start position, and it looks like our red player has rolled a three. And so we'll go ahead and advance them three places. The red player landed on a question mark, so it's time to draw a GLaDOS card. 
And it looks like the red player has drawn a match card. So they much match the energy cube with a button or trigger. And it looks like they started out by finding a cube, which is a great start. And on their second flip, oh, looks like they've got the energy compressor. So with that, we flip the cards back over. There's no match. And we'll go ahead and move back to the purple player's turn. Okay, both players in place. We'll let the purple person go. Looks like they got a two. And we'll move them two spots. And they, too, are on a question mark area. Uh, and they're going to draw a GLaDOS card. It looks like they had a trap card. The trap card they can place down at any time. And it will send the opposite player back to an outer level. And we go back to the red player's turn. And revisit where both players are. And it looks like our red player has rolled a four. Question mark. The turn is over for the red player, and we will advance back to the purple player. Purple has rolled a three. However, uh, you'll see here they land on a gray space, but with no matched cards lied down, laid down, rather, uh, their turn is over. back over to red and they roll a flip two face so we'll go back to the match card section for the red player remember any two cards uh, with the correct matches first flip looks like a an orange portal so they're looking for the blue portal now and that's a match so now the player has the opportunity to lay down those match cards on any gray spot and we see they've laid them down a few spots ahead hopefully they can land on it the next turn back to purple Purple rolls a three, and we'll see where that puts the purple piece. And it looks like they land on a question mark, so they're going to draw a GLaDOS card. And we'll see what they draw. And here it looks like we have an energy orb and the energy compressor. So they're going to go to the match section. And we have the orb on the first flip. Let's see, we've got the compressor on the second. And they do. All right, so we've got another match, this one for purple. And so let's see what purple decides to do. They've laid it on a gray square. Their turn is over. Hopefully they can land on that spot, and we will head on back to the red player. Red's looking for a three here, and they've got it. That's good news for red, bad news for purple. So red lands on a, uh, on a pair of match cards. That's going to portal them or advance them to an inner ring. And there it is. And it looks like since they landed on a question mark, they get to go right away, and instead of their turn being over, it's time to draw a GLaDOS card. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and remove the pair of match cards, send those back, and reshuffle the deck. And we'll see what red draws, or what purple draws for red. And it looks like we've got a solve question. So purple's going to go ahead and get their timer started, and let's see what red comes up with. Oh, they got the correct answer there, two. So they have earned a two-flip token, and also an opportunity for another card flip. See, so first flip, looks like they've got a door. Let's see what they're looking for here. And they come up with an orange portal. Those two do not match or correspond with, another, with uh, one another, so it's back to purple. Four here to land on their matched pair. They come up short with a two, move them two spots, nothing doing, no question mark, and we advance back to the red player's turn. Red has the option to use their flip token, but they're not going to. Rolls a three, nothing doing, no matched pairs uh, on that spot, so we can head on back to purple. Purple is two spots away from a matched pair. Oh, they rolled the question mark, so they're going to go straight and draw a GLaDOS card. Wait to see what they draw. And it looks like they've got one of the build cards, so they're going to have 60 seconds to construct that structure. We'll go ahead and fast forward time a little bit. And the purple player did it. So they've earned themselves a uh, earned themselves a two-flip token and a chance to flip some cards. Flirt, first flip, uh, they've got themselves a door, looking for a trigger. And they've got it. That's great. So red is now, or excuse me, purple, holding on to a few matched pairs. We'll see what they choose to use uh, or how to use them their next turn. Back to red. Rolls of four. That passes the question mark. Nothing doing on that spot. We head on back to purple. All right. Purple is two spots away from a matched pair. Let's see what they choose to do. Oh, it looks like they're going to go ahead and lay down their trap card. I want to put that in front of red in case they land on it. They get to go back a level. So that goes in the second level ring. And let's see what else purple decides to do. I'm going to use their flip token for an additional two flips before they roll. So we head over to the match card section. First flip is a blue portal. Looking for an orange portal now. And they've got a match. So purple, uh, what are they going to do? They're going to go ahead and lay down that other match. So now a two or a three 
will get them to a portal spot. Oh, and they come up short with a one. Uh, so nothing really going on there. Purple's going to move forward one spot, still on that outer ring, and still trailing Red, who is in the lead on the, or rather, in the second level. Red is back up, looking to avoid a four. They roll a two, puts them on a GLaDOS spot. Card is drawn, and they have come up with the plus one card. So at any point before or after a turn, a red player may lay down that card and advance one spot. In the meantime, we head on back to purple, looking for a one or a two to advance. Looks like they've got a two here. So the purple player lands on a matched spot. They can now portal to the inner level. Uh, all four of those cards now will be sent back to the match card area, reshuffled and laid back down. And now we have both players on the, in, in the second level of the game. Back to Red. Red is up, wants to avoid the two. Doesn't work out that well. They've laid it on the trap card. That's gonna kick them back one level. And that trap card is gonna go back into the Gladys deck. And now actually Purple has taken the lead as they're on the second level. Looks like this is where we're left with right now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, kind of call it a day in terms of calling the play-by-play -play of the game. So you can see kind of the, the pace of the game and how that goes forward. Uh, the strategy that's involved. We've got math and science questions on the GLaDOS cards. We have a little bit of engineering and construction uh, uh, capabilities with the uh, marble towers going on. Uh, a little bit of memorization uh, and recall with the flip cards and match cards trying to keep track of different players uh, and how they flip cards over and remember different patterns or where cards might be. Uh, and then we also have the use of the plus one, minus one, and trap cards. Uh, a little bit of strategy to get players uh, thinking about long-term uh, goals and how to uh, trap their enemies or, or whether they want to hang on to match cards as they get to the inner level. I did just want to uh, finish up with a little summary. Uh, remember those plus one and minus one cards can be used uh, before or after a player rolls the dice or lands on a space. Anytime match cards are used or they are passed by the player who laid them down, uh, then they're shuffled back into the memory stack and uh, reorganized and laid back face down. The number of gray spaces you can notice decreases as you advance to the inner levels. Uh, it requires a little bit more strategy. Maybe players choose to uh, stockpile those matched cards in the outer levels and maybe don't use the same strategy Purple did, which is lay down uh, and use those uh, flip tokens so early on. Uh, and then finally, I uh, remember the opposing player is the one who draws the GLaDOS card and reads it to the player who actually landed on the question mark or rolled the question mark. The player that does make it to the cake uh, is our winner. Thanks a lot. Uh, hopefully I was able to explain this to you on a, a reasonable level here. And uh, thanks for taking the time to watch it. Appreciate it.